Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today, we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of relationships and graphs titled Using Graphs. First, let's just quickly review. Uh, remember, we learned in our last uh, video on calculating slope that uh, graphs can tell us a lot of things. I spent a lot of time going through this slide. If you need more updates, I'll link in just a little while the calculating slope video, and you can review those things. I wanted to add in, because the last video was primarily on numerically calculating units, a lot like you do in math class, which by the way, if you know how to do it for math class, you probably don't even need to watch that other video. But units are something new to physics. Because numbers, if you just have a number, it doesn't have much meaning. Units are what give the meaning to numbers. They're the word that comes right after the number. For example, if I were to say, I gave my wife 12. Well, is that good? Is that bad? It doesn't have any meaning until we add a unit to it. For example, if I told you I gave my wife 12 roses, well, then that's a very sweet thing. It's wonderful. It's good, all that. But if I had to give my wife 12 restraining orders, well, that's a totally different story. You see how the units give meaning to the number. A number without a unit is typically a, a number without meaning. So as we uh, do slope and you divide the rise by the run, the change in y over the change in x, you will now have units associated with those numbers. So you will not only divide the numbers, but you will also divide the units. And if those units have some parts that are the same, they can cancel out just like if you had x divided by x in an algebra equation. All right, let's go through a couple examples here. So first of all, if we had a y-axis, a change in the y-axis of 130 miles, and a change in the x-axis of two hours, when we calculate the slope, we do 130 miles divided by two hours. Mathematically, we just plug it into the calculator. If you can't do it in your head, you'd get 65. And then the units would just stay like they are, miles in the numerator, hours in the denominator. And you get 65 miles per hour. However, if you have something a little bit more complicated, it might look like this. We might have a force, which is would be could be measured in kilogram meters per second squared. And our change in our y value was 40 kilogram meters per second squared. Our change in the x value was 5 meters per second squared. Okay, so um, of course the 40 divided by 5 gives us 8. But now as we look at this, we see we've got meters up here in the numerator. We got meters in the denominator, and so they cancel out, okay? Here we have second squared in the denominator. These second squareds are in the denominator of the denominator. If you remember when you divide, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. In other words, this is gonna flip up and be in the numerator. So those second squared cancel out as well. The only thing left is kilograms. Okay, so our final answer would be 40 divided by 5, which is 8, 8 kilograms. So we have to keep track of the units as we do this uh, calculation of slope. Okay, so just a reminder, calculating the slope. Um, as you do that, if you click on the data points, you'll be able to see the exact numbers. You don't have to estimate. So be sure you click on those to see what the data points are before you calculate your slope. Otherwise, you'll probably assume a little bit off but they want you to be exact here, so they've set it up so you can click to see the actual data point. Once you do that, then you can find your rise over run, your delta x over your delta y, how much the y increases divided by how much the x increases, any of those ways. Right here is where I'll, uh, I'll link the video on calculating slope. So if you don't know how to do this, you can go watch that video, but if you know how to calculate a slope, you can probably just uh, follow along with the rest of what I'm doing here. Okay, and then don't forget your units. So let's take a look here. So we see these x's on this particular graph. I think they're dots in the in the um, in the concept builder that you're doing here. Let's say we clicked on this dot up here. When you click on that up in the corner of your screen here, you'll see the x and the y coordinates for that point. Okay, so you'll have to do that for one point and another point then you can subtract the y's to get the change in y, subtract the x's to get the change in x, and do your dividing. 
All right, so what would that look like in this case? Um, in this case, it does go through the origin. And by the way, everyone but one of them goes through the origin. So be really careful with that one. It threw me off too. I got so used to them going through the origin when I was first clicking through here, I forgot to look and see if it did. And so I missed a couple, um, but that's just because I'd forgotten to look, see if it was going through the origin. So make sure you check that. If you start getting them wrong, check and see if that's why, because um, then you have to use two data points and do your subtraction. Okay, so here with the origin, we have 40 minus zero, so 40 meters per second. And then we're dividing by the change in X, which is 10 seconds minus zero, because it went through the origin. And so then we get 4, 40 divided by 10. And then our units, well, we got meters up here in the numerator. We've got seconds in the denominator here. We've also got seconds in the denominator here. So those are going to multiply times each other, okay, and give us meters per second squared. Some people call it meters per second per second, but uh, it's probably best to simplify it, especially for this exercise, to meters per second squared. All right. So that's how you do the uh, first level, the apprentice level, which was titled um, Calculating Slope. The next level is called for every dot 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 and the basic idea is it's trying to help make sure you understand what a slope is when you see a slope what does it mean okay and so if you have something like 130 miles per hour or 130 miles in two hours which we can calculate to 65 miles per hour we talked about that earlier this is telling you that the thing will go 65 miles in one hour so here's the phrasing they use in this concept builder. For every one hour change, so just take the thing in the denominator, for every one of those, because we've already divided, so it's no longer two. Once you divide, it's 65 over one, okay? So for every one hour change in time, there is a 65 mile change in position, okay? So for every, and then one of the denominator, there is a this number, that, change in position. Let's take a look at the graph here. Okay, so this graph is going to give you uh, the change in y, so degrees Fahrenheit, divided by hours. Okay, so if you take um, 20 uh, minus 8, so we're going to do a change from this point to this point, so 20 minus 8, it's changed positive 12 degrees Fahrenheit, and it did that in a change of six hours. So 12 degrees Fahrenheit in six hours gives us two degrees Fahrenheit per hour, which means for every, and then we take the denominator, one hour, there is a change, there is a two degree Fahrenheit change in temperature, because degrees Fahrenheit is changing temperature. So once again, the one hour comes from the denominator, the two degrees Fahrenheit comes from the numerator. And one last example that doesn't have hours as our uh, change. Here we got a density of 16.2 grams per milliliter. So for every milliliter, for every one milliliter, there is a change in volume of 16.2 grams. I'm sorry, change in mass of 16.2 grams. Okay. Don't worry about these words over here like temperature and volume and mass. As long as you're getting the milliliters in the right place, they don't try and trick you by testing you to see if you know grams is mass or milliliters is volume, because we haven't learned all that, okay? But one of the denominator, for every one of the denominator, there is this number uh, change in uh, whatever that is, in this case, mass. All right, our final example, our final level is the wizard level, and you have to predict. This is basically just the ability to read a graph. So, for example, it'll say something like this. The graph shows the force. Close this. The graph shows the force as a function of the spring stretch. So notice we got force up here, and we got spring stretch there. Use the graph to determine the force with, uh, I should say, with which a 
spring stretch, or the, sorry, determine the force with a spring stretch of 0.14 meters. So spring stretch is 0.14 meters. You go to 0.14 meters. Let me get a pen here. You go to 0.14 meters. You run that up to your line. You run across from your line over to here. And this one you get to estimate. So it's not halfway in between those. So maybe 7.6, 7.7, somewhere in there. It's pretty lenient. So you, if you get close to it, you should get it correct. Okay. Let's do one more example and then you'll be off to the races. The graph shows the number of pages read as a function of time. So we've got pages read and we've got time. Use the graph to determine the number of pages read. So the number of pages read in 3.5 hours. So we go to 3.5 hours, which would be right in here. Okay, we follow that up to the line. We follow the line across. <laughs> Try not to be as wiggly as I am on this. Um, and somewhere between 125 and 150, maybe 135, 140. Either of those would probably give you uh, the correct answer. Okay, so just uh, follow that across and you'll get the answer. It's just the ability to read the graph here, which is also a function of the slope. All right, so with that, you are good to go on reading graphs uh, and uh, enjoy puzzling those out and making sure you understand how they work. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.